that she's going to raise her hand from the audience. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the stage, Emily. Thank you. Hopefully, you are able to share screen now. I should be able to, yes. OK, well, we can get started whenever you're ready. We should, Steve, we should probably introduce Emily, even though everybody already knows who she is. Just be nice. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the next session. You know, we're here. Um, we're going to discuss some of the results and get feedback from the breakout sessions uh, from late yesterday. So leading this effort is uh, Emily Smale, who's the executive director of the Geo Blue Planet, um, and also has worked quite closely with uh, AquaWatch for a number of years here. Uh, great. Thank you, Steve. And hello, everyone, and welcome, and thanks for joining our our final day of discussion. So what uh, I have teed up here is I'm going to give a quick recap of the AquaWatch current structure and some of the activities, just as a, as a reminder while we're going to get into the discussion about how to move forward. Um, and then I will give a summary of some of the points that we got yesterday from the discussion. And then we are going to go into the, the lounge. So we'll have everyone join table one. And then we're gonna have a discussion um, there about some, some future directions that we can take. All right, so just a review of the current state of AquaWatch. So one thing is just a reminder that the group on Earth observations, which AquaWatch is nested under, has now four what they call engagement priorities. And so these are global policies that GEO is aiming to support with Earth observation data. And those are the Sendai Framework for Disaster, the UN Sustainable Development Goals, the Paris Climate Agreement, and then the most recent agenda is the new urban agenda, which is part of UN Habitat. So for, for AquaWatch, the current mission is written as to improve the coordination, delivery, and utilization of water quality information for the benefit of society. We have a, a primary goal, which is to develop and build global capacity and utility of Earth observation derived water quality data, products, and information to support water resources management and decision making. The way we currently have things structured is that we have five working groups, and we have uh, one that focuses on outreach and user engagement, another one on observations and data one on product and information, um, one that is more on uh, you know, tech transfer and access to this information, and then another one that works more on um, advocating for education and capacity. The way the governance structure is set up is that um, we have the uh, Geo Blue Planet, I mean, excuse me, the Geo Aqua Watch Secretariat, um, and we have a director currently, which is Steve Grabs, and then a, a science coordinator, Mary Beth Neely. And more recently, we are adding on some of these regional and thematic nodes. And so this is this is a you know exciting change, and we'll be discussing how best to, to integrate that moving forward. Um, and then these people join together as a as a smaller executive committee who meets a little bit more regularly than the steering committee and, and management committees, just to brainstorm about day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week project progress. Um, then we have the steering committee um, who provide you know, general oversight and approval of aquash directions. 
the management committee, which includes the secretariat, steering committee co-chairs, and working group chairs, and different working groups. So we have those five working groups. So yesterday, we had some sessions where we went through some of our existing activities and asked for feedback from the community. So I'd say right now what we're looking to do for, for Geo Aqua Watch is a, a recalibration um, where we look at what has worked and what hasn't worked, what would be the best way for us to reorganize after we have um, some more discussions about this and you know how to work best within the geo framework and connect to other geo activities and um, get our message out to, to users more. Um, so we yesterday talked about a few different items related to the organization of Geo Aquatch. One was um, a question to the community about if we should change the current governance structure. And so the summary is that there was general consensus that it would be good to consolidate and refocus the working groups. Um, and I'll say that a, a couple of the specific suggestions that came out in some of the breakout sessions were to potentially have these, you know, five overarching working groups that we have um, consolidated into two major working groups. So one that would focus on uh, technical issues like um, CalVal data processing, things like that. And then another one that would work more on the stakeholder engagement capacity development outreach type activities. And that within these groups, we could think of them as pools of experts and that we will then create, you know, sub teams and groups who are gonna work on a, a specific project or deliverable. Um, so I'd say that that's how we have operated for some of the initiatives we did that were successful, um, such as this, you know, Google Earth Engine project um, and some of the, the papers that have been produced. And that those those groups would be, you know, temporary groups who are, who are brought together for a, for a task. Um, and it can be helpful to, you know, align it with people's existing work since everyone's really busy. Um, and so, um, some, some examples might be to have a, a task team come together to support atmospheric correction development or things of that sort. Um, there was also a discussion about for, you know, some of these more user focused activities and trying to have um, overlap or relationship with regional geos as well as um, other thematic geo initiatives. And one way we could do that would be to have um, some joint working groups on specific themes. So for example, I work um, primarily on Geo Blue Planet initiative, which focuses on ocean and coasts. And we have a coastal eutrophication working group. Um, so one thing I've been thinking about is, would it be helpful to broaden that out to a, a, a general eutrophication working group? And it would be a joint between Blue Planet and, and Aquawatch. And um, from there we could have sub teams that work on um, you know the inland uh, SDG water quality and then the um, coastal SDG water quality activity for example but that at least then we would have some cross fertilization so that there's a little bit more collaboration between the inland and coastal activities um, so so that's one idea we talked about um, we also um, had general feedback that having a a director so so Steve for now has been um, really helpful in that it seems like most of the geo initiatives that are successful have a, you know a primary point person who is moving things forward um, so as we know Steve is um, going to be uh, you know enjoying his uh, his farming and traveling and act other activities in Wisconsin and so we'll be looking for um, a, a new director and how do we get um, other agencies besides NOAA to, um, or universities to support um, a, a director type position. Um, and I'll say from GEO, there are other initiatives and, and flagships that have had um, rotating um, 
you know, secretariat leads where different institutes will host a secretariat for a couple of years and then it will switch to another institute. Um, so that's something that, you know, we could be exploring. Um, and then there also are some geo activities that um, where a member country will con someone to the geo secretariat to serve as a kind of initiative director. So um, an example of that would be um, the geo glam director who is uh, you know, based out of the geo secretariat. Um, so that, that could also be an option if there's a country who wanted to nominate someone um, to be a, a director. Um, and then we also had some feedback that we need to, to clarify the roles of, of the committees. Um, in terms of what's working and what's not, um, everyone agreed that, uh, you know, Mary Beth um, really does a great job with uh, social media and, and getting activities for Aquawatch advertised. Um, and that we've had success on some of these projects that we've done that are um, more, more focused tax with the deliverable. So that seems to be something that works really well for us. Um, what we can improve on are um, we need more diversity in expertise as well as uh, geography. And um, not all of our working groups are active. So as we were discussing, um, maybe doing some reorganization of that would be useful, as well as, um, you know, rotating the leadership of these different activities so that um, it doesn't become too um, time consuming for, for any one person. Um, we have another challenge in that there are some similar um, activities that, that are popping up um, internationally, such as the World Water Quality Alliance and the Prime Water um, Community Group on Earth Observations for Water Quality. Um, and, uh, you know, how do we liaise with these groups and make sure that we're we're all working together and not, not you know, having competing efforts. Um, and uh, also, we, we don't get invited to every, you know, high level internationally water quality um, activity. Um, and we'd really like it to be that if someone's doing an earth observation activity on water quality, that the, you know, one of the first things they think about is uh, geo -Oc watch. So we wanna get more name recognition and uh, branding moving forward. Um, ways to do that, um, people were saying um, yesterday that, we should be more productive in inviting people to be part of Aquawatch. So the way we've done it, you know, primarily in the past is, uh, you know, people who who volunteer themselves. And, you know, one thing that came up in some of the discussions are that, you know, depending on on the culture, um, some people will not, will not uh, nominate themselves like they, you will need to ask them to participate um, and that we also need to be aware of some, some countries and areas and agencies that have kind of strict hierarchy in terms of who can participate in these types of committees. So, um, so that's not something else that we need to think about. Um, we also talked about, uh, you know, trying to get people who are involved in, in Aquawatch to think of themselves as, you know, ambassadors in their institutes as well, well as their country. Um, and that it'd be helpful for us to have more courses and to work with the, um, you know, language um, differences as well. So can we produce uh, our website and other materials in um, different languages? Um, so because if you do a training, for example, um, in uh, South America, you will miss a lot of people if you don't do it in Spanish, for example. Um, as far as recrafting the objectives, um, there was general consensus that we should clarify and simplify some of the objectives. And, um, you know, there, there is a discussion about should we provide um, services um, or should industry partners do that? And what is our role there? So that's something I think that we still need to, you know, flesh out exactly. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, funding, one thing that was that um, people thought we should try to participate more formally in some of these UN and SDG activities um, and put together a strategy for approaching donors um, like like aid agencies or, or, or other groups like that. Um, 
And, uh, you know, along those lines, should we, um, you know, put together a group of people that are organizations that we would be interested in funding and then, you know, approach them and how would we, we do that? Um, and uh, then there's, there's also that a lot of the activities have, have relied on, um, you know, funding that people get for, for individual projects. Um, and so moving on to the future directions for um, some of the major challenges that are facing the water quality community um, today. Um, one that came up pretty frequently yesterday was that uh, atmospheric correction is a challenge. And um, across the community, it would be really helpful if we could make it easier for people to ask for, for help or advice on developing their, their own atmospheric corrections. So that could be something that the Aquash community could support. Um, there was also a lot of discussion about, um, you know, trying to do more um, capacity development training and um, how-to how manuals, things of that sort. Um, and, uh, you know, thoughts about um, what we were talking about with these, you know, kind of subspecialty groups. Um, so can we create little, um, Task teams that are working on specific activities, and then how would they be related to the node? So, would you have a node that's the lead of um, uh, in situ measurements or validation, CalVal, something like that? Um, and then there was also, you know, just general challenges that some of the water quality community faces that um, there aren't a lot of, of standards in some areas, such as um, in situ optical measurements, and so it might be helpful for Aquawatch to tackle that. There is not enough calibration validation data. Um, so what can we do to improve that? And that we also need to keep in mind that a lot of countries do not have the bandwidth to download a lot of this data or um, you know, process it themselves. And that we may need to think about how else to get information out to people who don't have the, the strong bandwidth. Um, in terms of how we can do this better, um, there was a lot of support for more online events and that are more, um, you know, interactive. So like what we're having now where we have some of these discussions um, that we should do more, more, men more direct mentoring type relationships. And that for all activities, it would be helpful if we defined measurable goals and deliverables so that, um, people really know what is expected of them and then have a you know deadline. So we're, we're working towards something. And then also just do a better job of documenting what we have done that's successful. Um, so I'll say that, you know, the community, Aquawash community has been around for a long time and really has accomplished a lot, but um, it's not always necessarily attributed to Geo Aquawash. Um, so I think that that's something that, that could be improved. Um, in terms of how to focus moving forward, um, there were suggestions that, you know, we complete and then do an analysis of this user feedback activity that Working Group 1 um, is proposing. Um, also review outputs of some of these other activities, such as the, um, the Working Group 3 paper that uh, Andrew discussed earlier. Um, and, one thing that also came up a lot was that, you know, for water quality, one thing that's really missing in a lot of places is information on how to calculate uncertainty and quality assurance. Or if you have a product, how do you know what the quality of it is? Um, so that's something users ask a lot, and that would be helpful for Aquash to tackle. Um, also, um, you know, just discussions on where best should the community focus um, in terms of just compiling best practices and recommended products um, versus developing new products? Um, and so that's something that we want to, you know, discuss more more today. Um, in terms of the objectives, there was general agreement that we need to kind of streamline our objectives, and that, you know, for any working group or team we put together have specific measurable defined um, objectives and deliverables for every year. Um, 
And uh, there was also a suggestion that, you know, general help in data processing and statistical analysis is something that would be helpful. Um, so that's kind of the summary of where we're at. And what we would like to do now is to have everyone go um, to table one in the in the lounge. And we are going to have a um, you know breakout discussion with everyone. And we have um, organized a few questions to, to focus on that we're going to be talking about um, in the lounge. And so the first one is, what is the, you know, the baseline, the minimum activities that uh, GeoAuth Watch can focus on for, um, you know, the next few years? Um, and what, what can we do with existing resources? However, what would we want to do if we had more resources? Um, so for example, um, do we want to focus on best practices, compilation quality assurance, or is there still this interest in building a water quality information service? And if so, um, should that be targeted to be a geo flagship? Um, so a lot of the other geo flagships, for example, um, geo glam, which is crop monitoring, they produce a crop monitoring service. Um, so, you know, is there any interest in trying to move a water quality information service into like a flagship status, or do we just want to focus on the best practices? Um, for our, um, you know, new nodes, we have this exciting um, node that's being formed at the University of Stirling um, for, for a European node. And um, we also, you know, would like to, you know, try to ex expand that um, to, to, to other regions to help our geographic um, spread. Um, so how can we, what does a European node want to focus on? Um, and uh, how can we integrate that best into Geo Aquawatch? Um, and then we also want to talk about how we get more contributions from the community. So what can we do to get all of you involved more? Um, and, you know, some frank feedback for that would be really helpful. Um, you know, things that that work and don't work. I know one thing is that because this is a voluntary activity, we We seem to have lost Emily. Let me see if I can get her back. Okay. Maybe since we have a few minutes, um, <clears throat> I thought Emily did a great job of kind of summarizing the responses from yesterday's questions and from the sticky notes. If there's things that maybe were, weren't were captured that uh, or thoughts that people had, um, if you want to raise your hand now or you can either put those in the chat or raise your hand we can try and bump you onto the stage we seem to have a little bit of um there she okay. emily's well, coming back emily's back emily must yeah. have even worse weather where she is than i do than i do um actually i don't know that was very strange because i <laughs> can still hear all of you <laughs> oh really <laughs> we lost emily and i was like what <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah. Steve, Steve was just giving some interim remarks, and then you can pick back yeah. up again. He he I, just needs to finish. I I just asked if um, I mean you did a great job of capturing those comments yesterday. But if anybody had anything else that they failed to get on the sticky note, you know, one they could raise their hand and just express it now, or put it in the Q and A, or we are going to keep this board open. Um, was what we talked about for another week or so, and we're still it's still open for input. Um, and uh, and Mary Beth, could you could you remind me of what the schedule is now? Are we going to are we going to the breakout to have the discussion now, or now you had a steering committee meeting? Uh, no, the steering committee meeting is not for another hour. So yes, we, we have a full, we have a full hour 
um, somehow in the schedule, the first session was the keynote and the discussion were combined, um, but we came over here for the discussion a little early. So uh, I apologize for that. That was my oversight. I should have stayed over in the other session, but yeah. So I'll put notifications in the um, in the meeting just in case anybody gets a little lost about where we are and try and direct everybody to the lounge table one. All right. Yeah. So um, so please join us in the in the lounge and um, we'll go through, you know, and have an open discussion about some of those uh, questions that we we had on the, on the last slide there. Right. All right. And if anybody needs any instructions, I put them in the chat um, and I will hang out here for a little while um, in case anybody has problems. All right, so we will talk to you soon. All right, Steve, are you gonna hang out here with me or are you gonna go to the lounge? Yeah, right next to to live and then you'll when you're out there you'll see a grayed out area called lounge at the top of the page just click on that and go to table one okay see you there in a minute steve You're back. Yeah. yeah. I